Sounds dry.
Good morning. We're about to open our morning devotion. If you will, turn to Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. We'll be reading 1 through 12. Proverbs 8. Wisdom call. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the path where the path meets, she takes her stand beside the gates leading into the city. At the entrance, she cries aloud to you. O oh, people, I call out. I raise my voice to call all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. Prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. On it. Listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. I opened my lips to speak what is right, my mouth to speak what is true, for my lips to test wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just known, just known, none of them is crooked or per perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than ch choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than precious. rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Let us pray. Father God, we come this morning just to say thank you, Lord. We thank you for watching us all last night, Father God. We thank you for watching us as we travel up and down that highway all week long, Father God. Father, we ask you to watch the one that's on the road right now coming there and forth, Father God. Father, we give you all the praise, Lord. We praise. thank you for always being in our corner, Father God, always blessing us, even when we don't deserve to be blessed, Father God. Father, we ask you to watch our pastor and the first lady while they're away, Father God. Father, we just ask you to continue to be the loving God and always take care of us like you always have, Father God. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you glad to be in the service just one more time, Lord God? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, look up and tell him thank you, Lord God, for allowing and blessing us to even see one another. Hallelujah. One more time on this side of heaven. For yes, you, you, God, are good. Thank You're good you. all the time. All the time, you are so good. So good. Lord God, Lord God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the midst of the sanctuary, in the midst of the congregation, I will declare your works, for you are mighty God. Hallelujah, you are mighty God. You are an awesome God. You do awesome things, Lord. I had a thousand tongues. I could not tell you. Hallelujah. I couldn't praise you enough. I couldn't thank you enough, God. Lord God, at all and all sufficient one. You are a provider. Yes, uh, you are a sustainer. Yes, are. Now I could go on and on and you can sit there and listen to yes, me or you can help me out. Hallelujah. Yes, he is a good God. Yes, you are, Lord God. In spite of, in spite of everything that I've been through, hallelujah, I still got to say thank you, Lord God. In spite of everything, hallelujah, hallelujah. I still got to say thank you because you are still good. Hallelujah. You are still good, God. You are an awesome God. Hallelujah. 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 He's a provider. He's a sustainer. He's a blesser. Hallelujah. Every good and every perfect gift comes from you, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord God. I lift you, God. I lift you. I lift you. I lift you. I love you, Lord God. How many love the Lord? If you love the Lord, say so. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so in 
this house, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you are good. And we just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all can come go with us. Let's say a little bit of this. It's another day's journey. Lord, I'm glad. Come on, come on, somebody. Say it again. Look up and ask who is it. Who 
lifting up high. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are lifted, God. Above all things, we just lift you and we glorify you. Hallelujah. It's an old style song. It's an old style song. Hallelujah. It says, Lord, how many you old? I feel you old, God. You owe him something. Oh, I hear no answer. How many you old? Thank you, old God. Mm -hmm. How many you feel you're old? Jesus, something. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One songwriter put it. I can't repay him, but Lord, I would just say, thank you, thank you sir. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this song, it says, I can't fail him now. I've come too far to fail God right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it ain't talking about sin. It's not talking about sin. Because how many of you know you fail him on that end every day? day. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. But it's talking about he that endureth to the end. Hallelujah. He says his race is not given to the swift, but to he that endureth, he that holds out, he that keeps the faith, he that keeps trusting and depending on the Lord God. How many of you keep trusting on him? Come on, do you trust in him? Come on, do you trust him? Come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's go way back.
Because we couldn't have done it like that. We keep it messing it up. That's what the songwriter said. We keep messing it up. Hallelujah. But the power of God is awesome in this house. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, find somebody. This is a good way. Come on, find somebody. Find somebody. And tell them you owe him a lot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song is a good reminder, too. It's a good encourager. The time when you thank you for the do wrong. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Spirit of God comes in and reminds you to hang. And you begin to think, I owe it to because I can't give up now. I can't throw the towel right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Lord God. Come on, find you somebody, find you somebody. Come on, God, hallelujah. Come on, get out your seat, get out your comfort zone. You came to church, you put on your good stuff, you got your good shoes on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You got your hair fixed. Hallelujah. Come on, let's have some good service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Service in the name of Jesus. Not for no show, not for fashion. But giving God all the glory. Hallelujah. I owe it to Thank you. Thank you. 
examine ourselves. The Bible says examine yourself. Nobody else can examine you, only you. Examine yourself and if you feel you've done something against his word or to somebody, you say, Lord, forgive me. Before we take communion, we ought to be saying, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me because we all have done something. I don't know who you are, but I've done something. I've said something. And I'm telling you, when you, when you come up, grow up, you finally begin to realize we sin every day. Every day. If it's not with your mouth talking about somebody, it's about you doing something you shouldn't be doing. So I'm telling you, before we take communion, I want everybody, not to me, to yourself. Say, Lord, forgive me. It, you ain't doing it for us. You're doing it for you. Because forgiveness is for you. All right, let's look at 1 Corinthians. 11th chapter. I thought I was going to be able to use these glasses, but they don't work. 1 <laughs> Corinthians 11th chapter, starting at the 23rd verse. I got to move over so I can get my mouth in there. When you're there, say amen. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter starting at the 23rd verse. I see some people still turning. When you have it, please stand. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Amen. Let me see if I can get these gloves on. You got long fingernails so they don't act right. But I'm going to try it. <laughs> you know, I've been so blessed this week. I'm telling you, some things happened to me, but I had faith in God. And I told him, I said, Lord, it's between you and me. I didn't tell my children. I didn't tell my family. I didn't tell nobody but him. And he came through. And when he comes through, all you can say is thank you. This, uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, well, it's almost two weeks, I had been to the doctor, and they did a thyroid scan. And when they did the thyroid scan, they said, uh-uh, you got to have a biopsy. Now, anybody know about a biopsy? You know what happens to you. They go, they take a needle and put it in your neck and they pull out whatever they think they want to test. I didn't complain. I didn't say a word. The man said, oh, you came through at night. I had already told the Lord. I said, Lord, you got this. You the doctor. They are just practicing physicians. I trust you to bring me through. They were looking for cancer. But let me tell you something. God owns cancer. 
He got all control over cancer. So this past, this Friday, I got a call. They said, your test was negative. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Because I know who I serve. My God is an excellent God. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So I thank him. I thank him every day for keeping me. I tell you, you better keep, keep your eyes on the Lord. You better, you better call on him every day. Because he, you need him. You need him. Every day. All right. Let us, let the, let us stand. And the choir, as the choir go first, and then we want to come from the right. this opportunity to commune with you. We remember that you died on Calvary's cross and that you got up with all power in your hand. Lord, we just thank you. And Lord, we will continue to commune with you as often as we can see fit. Because you say it as often as we do it. It doesn't mean we have to do it one Sunday. We can do it any Sunday and any time because this is your body and we are recognizing your blood and we are recognizing and we just want to thank you thank we bless you 
and we praise you in Jesus' name. Now you may take your bread and eat. Take your cup and you say drink all of it. Don't leave any. It might be healing for your body. the Lord in spirit and in truth That's right. because we could not be here we could not be here a lot of people were here yesterday they gone today so we, we need to recognize that God must have a purpose for us being here and that purpose is for us loving one another we got to learn to love one another. We got to pray for one another. We got to tell each other that we love them. We can't sit around and, and, and think of stuff to talk about somebody. I don't have time for that. I got time to love and to do all I can do. If anybody asks me, I be volunteering stuff. My neighbor said, Miss John, every time I see you, here you come with something. I'm trying to let them realize that I am walking in the way and that I am a believer 
and I am in the light, and I want my light to shine. Let your light shine in your area. Let it shine so that people will see your good works and do, and recognize that they need Jesus. They need Jesus. All right. Father, let the words of my mouth. I'm sorry. I forgot you. I was here. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Father, I just thank you for this word today. This word is not my word, but it's your word. And I ask that the anointing of the Holy Spirit be on every word so that it will touch hearts, that people will get a revelation from what's going on. We just thank all of those who are on Facebook. We thank them for being on. And we just want to give them a hand clap and say, come back again. Our scripture is coming from Matthew, the 21st verse, and the 22nd, I mean, 22nd, 21st chapter and 22nd verse. Matthew 21, 22. If you have it. Matthew 21, 22. One verse is where we're coming from. And this is from the New King James Version. So it may not read exactly like yours. So if it doesn't read exactly like yours, it's still a word. All right. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive it if you act in faith. You may be seated. Today I want to talk about prayer and faith. What is prayer? We, we pray. But what is it? Prayer is communication between you and God. And it's a two-way street. It's not a one-way where you just talk to the Lord because he talks back to you. If you listen, the Spirit will talk to you. When you talk to him, the Spirit will talk to you. And you will get answers that you never thought you would get. The, the prayer is not begging. You don't have to beg God for anything. It is not begging, but communicating your desires. Communicating your desires, because God already realized and knows all. So you're not telling him something he didn't know. When you pray, he already knows what you're going to ask before you ask. I want to talk to you about the Lord's Prayer. I know we, we, want, we like to say the Lord's Prayer because Jesus' disciples ask him, Lord, teach us to pray. Is that not right? The prayer, Lord's Prayer has many parts, and I'm going to just give you some of the parts, and you may want to look it up yourself if you don't trust what I'm saying. The first part of the prayer is an invocation. An invocation. When he said to his disciples, pray our Father in heaven. That's the invocation. Okay. Then he said, he may make a petition. Make a formal petition. For God's name is hallowed. Thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our, forgive our sins. Deliver us 
from evil. That is the petition in the Lord's Prayer. The next thing is doxology, D-O-X-O-L-O-G-Y. And it says, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. He owns everything. Everything belongs to the Lord. We don't own anything. And we need to stop running around saying, child, is my car, is my house. No, he's letting you use it while you're here. And when you're gone, somebody else will use it. We need to understand that because we think, oh, it's, this belongs, that's my money. I'm not giving them folks my money. Well, you know what? God said, all the silver and gold belong to him. All the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. So you don't even own, uh, belong to yourself. You belong to him. There are many ways of praying. You can kneel. You can stand up. You can sit down. You can lay prostrate. Prostrate means you lay out flat on the floor, on the ground, wherever you are. And you can pray silent there. So there are many ways of praying. Because you're not talking to people, you're talking to God. It's not about what people know. See, I, I know there's a lot of people say, child, I can't pray like so-and-so. You don't have, you're not supposed to be praying like they pray. Your needs are not their needs. So you're supposed to pray what you need, what, what you need from God. Don't be walking around talking about, child, the reason I don't pray because, see, I can't pray like Minister Lula or Sister Deborah Smith. I can't pray like them. You don't have to pray like them. You just say, Talk to the Lord and tell him what you need and what's in your heart because he already knows. Nothing surprised God. Prayer is always in order. It doesn't matter where you are or when you decide, decide to pray. You know, people have stopped me in Walmart and said, Ms. John, would you pray with me? I stop right then and pray with them. Let me tell you why. Because when I leave out, I'll forget. When you get my age, you, you forget, you walk in the room and you forget what you went in to get. I'm telling you the truth, and I see a lot of people don't know this, but that's the truth. You get our age and you walk in the room to get something, you can't remember what you went in there to get. And then you got to go back, and you go back and you, oh, that's what I went to get. So I'm telling you, when, if someone asks you to pray for them, stop right then and pray for them. Don't say, I pray for you. I'm not, I pray for them. Our people call me on the phone. Ms. Jones, so-and-so say, will you pray? I said, hold on. I pray right then. Am I not right, Sister Hattie Jones? I pray right then. I don't care who it is. Because you know what? The Bible says that we are to pray for one another. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, what? Availeth much. So we gotta pray for one another. And when somebody, you, you don't know what you're gonna be doing, what will happen when you pray for somebody when they ask you. Cause they may be on a dire need. They may be thinking about committing suicide. They may be thinking about anything. But if you pray for them, God will do the work. You can't do any work, but you can pray for them. Luke 18 and one said, Jesus said, Man should always pray and not faint. We should always pray. We ought to have a prayer life. Everybody here ought to have a prayer life. You shouldn't have to ask the pastor to pray for you. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. When you wake up in the morning, pray. When you lay down at night, pray. When, you, when you're in the midnight hour and things are not going well, pray. God is listening. And he's waiting for you to call on him. He's waiting, because he already know what your needs are. The Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. Psalms 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Don't you want the desires of your heart? So what you gotta do, delight yourself in him. 
not in the world and not in what people are saying and what they're doing, but delight yourself in him. The key to prayer is faith. You can pray all day, but if you have no faith, you're wasting your time. Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the assurance of things being hoped for. And otherwise, it's the conviction or the evidence of things not seen. You praying for something and you don't see it, but don't you know it already exists? It just has to manifest itself. So when you're praying, you might not see it right then, but you claim it anyway, and it will manifest itself. But you gotta have faith. Jesus taught his disciples to have faith in God. Our elders used to sing a song, say, say wherever he leads me, I will follow. I know Sister Zell Marie Murphy remember that song. I know Brother Victor remember that song. We used to sing that song. Is that not right, Sister Hattie Jeffrey? We used to sing that song. Where he leads me, I will follow. And you know what? That's what we should do, wherever he leads us. Don't be questioning him, time. Lord, what I got to do? No, just follow. Follow where he leads you. Since we are, have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. We got to first remember that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are one. Just as we are one with Jesus, we are one with Jesus. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he's interceding for each one of us. When things are not going well, talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. He's sitting there waiting for you to call him. He wants to have a talk with you. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it all right. I know I'm old. I'm going back to old things, but... Those old songs were good. Every breath we take belongs to God. If he take away his breath, we are no longer alive. Everything is the Lord's. I just want to thank him, y'all. All I want to do is say thank you. Thank you, Lord. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank him enough for what he's done for me. I don't know what he's done for you, but I know what he's done for me. And if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank him enough. Because every time I will look, work, look around, he's blessing me. He's blessing me coming and going. He's blessing me when I don't know he's blessing me. You know, I, I, I tell my children all the time, he blessed me with four children. But I couldn't have four more beautiful children that takes, looks after me. If they call my house and the telephone rings and I don't answer, they either call him Vanessa or somebody. You seen my mama? Because they got to check on me. And that's a good thing. Because a lot of people's children don't check on them. A lot of people's children don't care where they, where they are. But mine, if I leave home, I have to call and tell somebody, look, I'm going so-and-so. So they won't be calling all over town. Child, I'm blessed. And I know I'm blessed. I get a call from North Carolina all through the week. What you doing? Watching television. I know you've been out. I sure have. <laughs> Cause you, I mean, want to tell you, you can't keep up with me and can't tell me what to do. <laughs> but I just, yes, sir. <laughs> Cause he thinks he's my daddy. We owe G Jesus everything. In the morning is Jesus. Yes. In the noonday is Jesus. Jesus. When we lay down at night, it's Jesus. Hallelujah. In the midnight hour, yes. when the world is pressing you down, it's Jesus. We believe, we are believers, and we have authority to speak over situations and circumstances in faith, and they will obey. Jesus told us that. All we have to do is speak to the situation, and they will obey. But we got to start doing it. We can't sit back and say, well... I don't know. I know they say it in the Bible, but I don't know how true they Try it. The Bible says, try me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. Tell me. I know he's a, he's a provider. I know he is. 
Mark 11, 23 through 25 says, and I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says, it will happen and it will be done for him. That's the Bible. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what the Bible is saying. Therefore, I tell you, whenever you pray, believe you have received it. Not you're going to receive it. You have already have it. It just hasn't manifested itself. And it is yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, go to that person and ask for your, their forgiveness. See, we'll do stuff to people, and we know we did it, but we won't go to them. We too lifted up in pride. But God said, the Bible said, he can't forgive you until you forgive other people or ask other people for forgiveness. So we have to go to them and say, look, I know I, I hurt you. I know I said this was about you. Forgive me. You're not supposed to come around the community, communion table without forgiving people. And if you know somebody has something against you, go to them anyway. And if they don't forgive you, that's their problem. But you got to go to them. Forgiveness is the key to our prayers being answered. Faith is the key to receiving what you pray for. Believe you already received it and you have it. The Old Testament prophets had faith. They had faith. They had faith. You, when you go back and read the Bible, they had, whoo, you be thinking about Enoch did not taste death because he had faith in God. He didn't die. And according to the scripture, when Jesus comes back, that's when you're going to see him again. Noah had faith to build an ark. Now, you know it took him some years to build that ark. He didn't have all these tools we got today. And what he had, it took him a while to build it. But he had faith in God, and he built the ark and did what God told him to do. We have to do what God tells us to do. Abraham trusted God to lead him to a place where he would give him, that he would give him and where his descendants would be. God told Abraham, he said, I want, I want you to leave your hometown where you are, where all these owl gods are. Leave, and I'm a, you just go where I'll tell you where you go. And he went left. He didn't have a problem with leaving. He just left. Now, can you imagine you wandering somewhere and you don't know where you're going? But Abraham had faith, and he is called a friend of God because he had faith. He trusted him. Abraham had faith even when God told him to offer up his son. Apparently, he, he said, okay. He didn't tell his wife he was taking the son to offer him up because what they did was build this fire and they laid the offering on the fire and it consumed them, right? You Bible scholars, is that right? Okay, so he took his son, Isaac, Isaac, and he said, okay, we're going to the Mount, Mount, Mount Moriah. They went. He told his servants, stay here. We'll be back. When he said, we'll be back, you know what? I believe he knew that even if his son got consumed, God would restore him. So he said, I tell you what. And Isaac kept looking. He said, where's the sacrifice, Father? According to what I read, he was about 16 years old. He wasn't no little baby. And he said, where's the sacrifice? Abraham didn't say anything. But he got to the place where he wanted to make the sacrifice, and he set the altar up. And he got ready to kill his son. He raised up the knife, and God said, Abraham, Abraham, stay your hand, for I know you trust me, so stay your hand. And when he looked over, he saw a ram in the thicket, and he got that ram, and he offered the ram up. But Abraham had faith, and that's why he's called a friend of God. Moses trusted God to lead the children out of Egypt. Now, you know, they had been in Egypt 400 years. 
Because God had told Abraham that you're going to, your people are going to go down to Egypt and they'll be there for 400 years. But when God got ready to deliver them, he sent Moses. And Moses brought them out. But you know, he, I know he had to do some praying. Because you know people are hard-headed. And they start mummering and grumbling against Moses. Why you bring us out here? And we ain't got no water and all these different things. But God was right there. And one of the reasons they wandered around that mountain for 40 years is because they grumbled and complained. And sometimes things that happen to us, the what reason that we go around and have a hard time is because we mummering. I don't know why I can't, I don't know. You know, we are some mummering people. And we complain a whole lot. If you got a finger hurt, you gonna complain. Child, my finger hurting. I try to stay away from people who are always complaining. Because I don't like people complaining. Don't tell me about what's hurting you. Tell God. Tell God. Child, my back just hurt me. My back is killing me. Well, you have what you say. The Bible says you have what you say. So if it's killing you, it's going to kill you. I'm just telling you what the word said. Joshua had faith that God would lead the Israel into the promised land, and he, God led them. Joshua kept the faith. He led the people, and they had complainers and grumblers with him. But God told him to be of good courage. Be of good courage, for I'll never leave you. I'm going to be with you. And you got to go over to Jordan. A river. And when you go over the river, it's something going to have to happen. But God dried it up so that they could walk through on, and, and, and they didn't have to swim through. Because the water could have stayed there. But they walked through. Tell me how good our God is. Tell me if he's not a God that works miracles all the time. All the time he's working miracles. And he's working them for us. We act like he's not working for us, but he's working miracles. I told you, I just had a miracle this past week or so. I know that was a miracle because I had prayed about it. And everybody was thinking, that she's going to come back with cancer. The devil is a lie. He has no control over me. I belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he can't do nothing to me except God allows it. He has to allow it. By faith, David slew Goliath. He was nothing but a little boy with a slingshot. But he killed the giant because God was with him. By faith, David became king of Israel. God called him a man after his own heart. See, we, 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 we got to get out of being afraid and don't, not saying what God said. If we just say what the words say, we'll, we'll get through it. Everything will work for our good. We need to have the God kind of faith. Even when we don't see it, we believe that God's word is true. Jesus already told us he'll never leave us nor forsake us. God said, I'm not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I should repent. Have I not said it? Will I not bring it to pass? He will bring everything to pass. He's loving us. He's keeping us. And he wants us to worship and praise him. Brother Victor shouldn't have to say, y'all stand up. Y'all do this. You know what? He's done enough for us to stand up all the whole service. He's done enough for us to stand the whole service and say, Lord, I just can't thank you enough. Bible say heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand in the midst of the air. God's word will not return to him void. What he said, he will bring it to pass. God loves you. He wants to bless you, and he wants to keep blessing you. 
and all we have to do is worship and praise him. And we praise him because of what he does, but we worship him because of who he is. We don't, we don't, pray, we don't worship him because of what he does. We worship him because of who he is. He's God Almighty. He's been here all the time. We see what the condition the world is in. God sees it. And he's not surprised. He knew Satan was going to get busy. Because Satan knows his time is not long. So Satan is, is, is doing everything he can do. But you know what I told somebody? I was out there and it was so hot. And I remember that the Bible say the hell is going to be seven times hotter than the most heat we have. I said, uh-uh. I can't go to hell because I can't take this little heat down here. I got I to gotta praise the Lord. I got to bless him. I got to stay with him because hell is going to be hot. But then when you go to hell, you're going to be there only for a while. And then you're going to get into that eternal fire that will burn forever. I can't, I can't go there, y'all. Y'all go by yourself. I can't go there. I can't go to hell because, and I can't go to the eternal fire because I know that I have a Savior. And my Savior loves me. And he's protecting me. I, I claim salvation because I know I have salvation. Because I confessed him with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And I know that. I don't, I don't have no doubt about that. Now, some people may say, oh, well, I'm, I'm trying. No, I know he did. I believe it. And I am saved. And I pray that everybody in here is saved. Because a lot of times we're sitting in here and sometimes people are not saved. But I want everybody in here to be saved. Thank God for his blessings. Thank God for who he is. But thank God most of all for salvation. Salvation is the key to everything. If you are not saved, in hell you're going to lift up your eyes. And I don't plan to lift my eyes up in no hell. I've been serving him for too long. I remember when I was a little girl. <laughs> and my daddy, anybody knew T.J. Jones, they know. He made us go to church every time the door opened. And the children laughed at us and they made fun of us. Yeah, daddy go to church again. And he would go get other folks' children and, take them and bring them to church. But he taught us that God is God, and there's no other God but him. And we had to read our Sunday school lesson every Saturday night. See, other people be out playing, we'd be in there reading Sunday school lesson, and then we had to explain it to him, explain what we read. I started teaching Sunday school at 13, y'all. I got baptized at 13 out there in Chickasaw, where all the green stuff was. Now, Zell Marine know about that. No, I wasn't in Magna. I was out there, Chickas out there by St. Mar, Chickasaw. I got baptized out there, and they had to move the green stuff to carry you down. <laughs> and I, when I went out, Dad took me out to St. Mar because I didn't get up down the tram and say I was saved. So my daddy said, well, you're going to get saved. You're going to get saved this year. So he took me out to St. Mar. He said, now, if you get up there with a lie, I'm going to make you sit down. I said, I said, oh, Lord. I said, now, the man that told me he want me to be saved, but now he's telling me if I get up and, I, and he think I'm lying, I'm gonna have, he's going to make me sit down. So the man was preaching, and he said, if you believe that Jesus is the Christ and that he rose and they all this. And I stood up and got took to the seat. I was waiting for dad to get up. I was just waiting for him to get up. But you know he didn't get up? And he told me, say, I believe you saved. But I 
knew my daddy, and when he said something, he was going to do what he said. So I just thank God that he took me and he trained me. I started teaching the little children at Triumph Church over there at 13, and I've been teaching ever since. I've been preaching. My son said I've been preaching all the time. When I called him and told him that I had been called, he said, I don't know why you're just telling me, because you've been preaching all the time. I said, well, I didn't know that you knew. He said, I, don't need, I didn't need to know, because God had been to call you a long time. I don't know why you wasn't doing what he said. You've been, you've been hard-headed. That was my son, John. He doesn't talk much and don't say much, but he said that. I said, well, I just called the pastor and told him. He said, you should have been and told the pastor. But you know what? I thank God that I am saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. It's in me. I'm like Pastor John. That's all I got for y'all. I don't have nothing else for you. I don't have anything else for you. Now, if someone is not saved, I'm asking the deacon and deaconess to come forward. Somebody get the children from back there.